أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلقه وخاتم أنبيائه ورسله نبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد الله وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين قال الله العظيم في محكم كتابه الكريم وهو أحسن القائلين وأصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين يبلغون رسالات الله ويخشونه ولا يخشون أحدا إلا الله وكفى بالله حسيبا آمنا بالله Respected scholars, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 9th of April, 1980. An inspiration for people like myself and others who sought to reap the fruits of his continuous struggle to uphold the teachings of the religion of Islam as well as disseminate the knowledge of the Ahlul Bayt Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhim ajma'een. Yet there is one way that a Sayyid Shaheed al Sa'id stood out in this regard. If you examine his biography, if you look through his teachings, you'll come to an important point that one of the most important role models that the Sayyid al Shaheed worked towards establishing his life around was none other than Sayyid al Shuhada Aba Abdullah al Hussein Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. An individual like a Shaheed al-Shaheed al-Sadr noticed that in order to uphold justice and truth and to find tyranny and oppression, then Imam al Hussein should be the exemplar. How did he do this? You look at through his statements, his teachings, and you'll come to this following conclusion. We are told that when he was first arrested, his brave faithful scholar sister a shahida amina bint al huda sadr went to the courtyard and the sahan of imam al muttaqin amir al mu'mineen and she stood to say to the people that your leader your scholar has been arrested has been taken what would you say what would you do and this of course was a movement in order to establish his position and at the same time instill fear in the heart of the oppressive Ba'athist regime, when which the Sayyid al Shaheed thereafter was released. Some people who lived with him, like a Sheikh al Nu'mani says, during the months that he was under house arrest, he would look outside and he would see those officers, those Ba'athists who were prohibiting anyone from entering the house. He would look at them and they were thirsty. They would be in the state of thirst. And he would say, despite the fact that water had been cut to his house, despite the fact that he himself needed the water and his family at the same time, but he would command or he would instruct his family to go and feed those individuals, even though they were his enemy. This reminds you of a scenario on the plains of Karbala. When Sayyid al-Shuhada would do exactly how Imam al-Sadr looked at. At the same time, I personally had the opportunity to meet the individual who buried the body, the holy body of Sayyid al-Shaheed radhwanullahi ta'ala alayhi. In 2003, I went to Wadi Salam and he was there. And I went to the grave of Sayyid al-Shaheed and I spoke to him. And today I have the photographs and many of you have seen it available on the internet. That the body of Sayyid al-Shaheed, which was buried and transferred many times, this individual who did so, says to me that A, of course, his body remained intact for the period of time from 1980 to 2003. For 23 years, the body was completely intact. He says, when I would take it from one area to another and I would open the coffin, he says, by Allah, I will not be able to look at the face of Sayyid al-Shaheed because of the light that shines from his face. 
this is not what I wish to tell you about. He himself told me that when we took the body, we had to transfer it, but I could feel that the head was not fully attached to the body. So I opened it and I saw that the head was nearly severed from the body itself. Today, people who were present when the oppressive tyrant Saddam was brought as Sayyid al-Shaheed and his faithful sister, he said to him famously, how would you like me to kill you? How would you like me to assassinate you, to execute you? As Sayyid al-Shaheed, according to certain accounts, he said, and at that moment he was in constant remembrance and the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which infuriated the tyrant even more said to him that I wish to leave this world exactly the same way as my master Hussein ibn Ali did. And Saddam obliged of course. Saddam's role model was Yazid. Imam Sadr's role model was Sayyid al-Shuhada. And you notice the similarity that a Sayyid al-Shaheed had a sister called Bint al-Huda. Just like how Imam al Hussein had a sister called Zainab al Kubra who stood to carry the message. And of course, Bintul Huda, this illuminating like this role model, not only for the sisters, but also for the brothers. And today, her works, her literature, stand as a testament to her legacy and to her knowledge. She would go and she would write stories about issues affecting the society then which would get the message across. These books need to be read. These books need to be understood. The life of a Sayyid al-Shaheed and, and his own sister, Bint al-Huda, peace and blessings be upon them, needs to be scrutinized and very much adhered to by many of the youth. And it's a wonderful thing to see that all the way here in Dearborn in the United States, after this period of time, after the Shahada of this great individual, he is remembered and he is revered. So we salute him, we salute his teachings, we salute the blood and his sacrifice that he gave and the fact that he will remain as a role model for many, many people for generations to come. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallillahumma ala muhammad wa alihi tayyibin al-tahirin.